showing you a really cute 3D Abu from Aladdin. And if you're an Aladdin fan, I have some past Aladdin themed videos. I have a bunch of genie videos. I say a bunch, but it's probably like two. But I have some genie videos from the past. One of them is four dimensional at least. I don't see, I don't, I make all these things and then I forget about them until I go and I search for them to put them in links for you guys in the videos that are similar. I'm like, hey, I did that and I did that and I never remember until I go back and look at them. So I know there are some genie videos and there's definitely some Jasmine videos and there's yesterday's video which I think tops everything which is the Jasmine and Aladdin on the magic carpet that are flying around the veil. That one is just so cool. So if you missed that one, check that one out. Also just scroll through my past videos in the links below because if I don't remember, you probably don't remember. And even if you watched them, want to see them again. So I hope you guys like them as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye! So we are going to begin on the background, which I did include the background tutorial in the other video. So if you watched that one and you didn't get to see the background, here it is. We have a shimmery light blue or kind of a medium blue that we're going to apply to the lower two thirds of the nail, brushing it up to try to fade the color out and then grab a darker glittery blue or shimmery blue, whichever floats your boat. And we're going to ombre it from the darker to the lighter. So brushing that over the top. When you're doing an ombre, use very wet acrylic so that it kind of dilutes the pigment, makes it a little easier to blend. Once you have both of those colors down, you can scrub your sparkly silver metallic stars and you can place them all over the upper portion of this nail. You can, you know, kind of choose where they go. You can have a whole bunch of them. You could put in two, whatever kind of style you prefer is a-okay. Once you're done with your star placement, then you can go ahead and encapsulate this nail in clear acrylic. I didn't use any extra glue, if you will, to stick my stars down. If you find that your stars aren't sticking because you didn't um, have enough time between when you laid your acrylic down and when you placed your stars, your acrylic set up too quick and it wasn't sticky enough, you can always just attach individual stars with a bit of nail glue or a little bit of clear acrylic. Once your nail is encapsulated, go ahead and file that into shape with your e-file. Make sure it's nice and smooth and perfectly ready to start sculpting the 3D nail art on. So now we're going to take and begin sculpting our abu. I'm going to begin at the tip of the nail and kind of work my way up, which is contradictory to what I say in almost all of my videos for how to start your nail art. If it's going to be something with a face, I always say to start with the face and then sort of work your way out and around from that because the face is the most important thing. And you wanna make sure that that face gets placed where you want it on the nail. Honestly, I have no idea why I started with his body. And as soon as I started, I was like, well, that was kind of weird. I wonder why I did that. So <laughs> bear with me normally. And I would always recommend this start with Abu's face. So the darker portion of his face is going to be kind of around the outside of his face, down like the back of his head and the top of his head where that tuft of hair comes out. So he's got sort of the lighter portion. And on most, um, most monkeys, they have like a flesh part, like a skin face. And that area that is skin is going to be this lighter shade of tan that we're going to use to sculpt that area of his face, but the rest of his body is going to have that darker shade, at least, you know, as far as the start of it, a start of it. So we've got his lips sticking out. He's got kind of a, a big cheesy grin on his face. We've got his lower lip, and then we're going to be adding a little bit of 3D detailing to his upper lip. So I'm sculpting Abu in a very exaggerated 3D way so that everything is kind of already sculpted in. We're going to sculpt even in like his eyelids and all of those details. Whenever you're going to be sculpting something in that fashion where it's really 3D, it's all about layers. So my my thing that I like to do, and this isn't the way that I actually see most 3D artists um, sculpting things as far as nails specifically goes, is I like to add a base of acrylic down. So that base layer of that tan color that I did is the first little bit. And then I like to build things up off of that. I see a lot of people that like, if they're going to be sculpting a 3D face, they'll have the background color and then they'll just sculpt the nose in the middle and then they'll add the brow bone or something and they'll kind of build out that way, but they don't have a base of whatever color started in the, in the front of it and, or in the back of it. And it, ends up looking gorgeous. There's no reason that you necessarily have to. I just find it makes things a little easier. So depending on your preferences, if you've never done it this way where you have just like a base layer of color down first, give it a try. See if it seems to work out for you. And maybe it won't and maybe it will and you won't know until you try. So we've got the bridge of, of our little Abu nose going down. It's not down the middle of his face. He's kind of looking off to the side. And if you are sculpting this with a Jasmine or Aladdin nail or the Jasmine and Aladdin nail, you are going to want to angle him so that he's looking towards them or looking towards something. If it's just an Abu nail on its own, then you, he can be looking in either direction. But if there is something that he logically should be looking towards, face him that direction. I'm going to be giving him his eyelids. 
sort of his eyelid area is a slightly more purple tone color. So I'm going to be using a different shade that's a similar in darkness, but just a little bit more of like a, a pink or a purple undertone to it to add that eye area going around. I'm going to add a little bit more of the brown around his chin. You can use the tip of your breast to sort of pull out the color a little bit to give it a little bit of a fur texture. Add his ear. There's a little bit of dark brown between his face and his ear. So don't stick the ear directly to his face. And once you have it done so far and you have all of these shapes as much as you as much as you do, you can keep going through and adding more details. So his face is fairly well detailed now. His eyes aren't quite done, and we're gonna do that right now with some white acrylic. We're gonna be sculpting in those eyes. But I mean you've got a really good base started. We're also going to do that detailing to his body. Depending on how much of his body, this is a, a relatively long nail. So you might not have that much of his body. And if you didn't, you could really simplify what I have, what I did to his, you know, adding his arms and his, and his chest and all of that. You could, you know, shrink down the amount of work you put into it. His eyelids are the same dark brown as his other areas of fur, which to me is kind of funny because logically they should just be the tan color, but he does have dark eyelids, almost like they're bruised. That's what I always think. I think his eyes, eye areas look bruised with that sort of more purple tone color around them and then the really dark eyelids. Um, but we're going to be adding in those eyelids, bruised or not. And then after you have those eyelids in place, you're really doing really well in his face. And if you wanted to stop here, you really could. If you want to take it a little bit further, he does have a little bit more to his smile that you could add. So add another little cheek area with that tan color of acrylic. I'm going to add a couple wisps wisps of fur, which sounds weird. Normally, you, normally you'd say wisps of hair, but wisps of fur going down his forehead and something like that. If you have a color of acrylic paint that you're going to be adding details with, it might just be easier depending on how stain prone your darker color of acrylic is. Sometimes a darker color of acrylic, if you're sculpting it on top of a lighter color, like the lighter color of his face would make a mess. And if that's the case for yours, maybe try to do that with a paint type product later. And then we're going to be adding on his little hat with purple. So whatever color of purple that you're going to use for the hat, keep it out because you're going to use that for his vest too. Eventually, once we get to that point, so we're going to be adding the back part of his vest because the, the color of it kind of sticks up. We're going to just begin with that. We are going to be sculpting in his arms. We're going to kind of do the vest in stages. So this will be the first stage of it. And then after that has kind of just begun, then you can grab a larger bead and carry that down and around. So we've got that coming down, pat it out, try to keep it fa uh, fairly smooth so that when you go through and you do add his arms, it doesn't have like a big drop off from where the arm goes. That's like where the shoulder is that's within the vest and then how it kind of goes off of it. You want to try to make that a smooth transition. And that particular shade of purple that I'm using, which I believe is Hazel Grace by Double Dip, it'll be in the description box below, but it isn't quite as pigmented as far as like a solid pigment color as a lot of them are. I find purple in general, regardless of brand, tends to be a little bit more, um, I don't know, it's just like the color is a little bit more modeled in it. If you have any color of acrylic that is like that, after you pick up your bead of acrylic, so you have the wet bead that is beginning to polymerize on your brush before you apply it to the nail, whether it's for an overlay or for art this way, if you flip your brush over and you press it against your against your paper towel, so the bead of acrylic is on top of the brush and then the paper towel is underneath the brush, it'll pull some of that excess liquid out from underneath. And with that, it'll also make the bead a lot more uniform in color. It's really helpful. And if you've never tried that before, you can do that with any color of acrylic, whether it seems like it's a bit um, patchy or not, and it can really help out. I find I only have to do that with certain colors, but depending on the circumstance, if you want it to be really pigmented and very thin, that is a great option to try. It's not necessarily going to make every color completely opaque, depending on, you know, some colors aren't meant to be completely opaque, but it will definitely just create a smoother, a little bit easier to work with bead of acrylic. But when you're doing that, you do have to make sure that your acrylic starts out a little bit on the wet side. It can't be powdery, which you don't want your bead of acrylic to be powdery at any point, but that is one thing that you have to keep in mind. So after we have all of our sculpting done, we have a little Boo's arms crossed. He's got some fingers. Then we're going to go through and we're going to be adding some highlighting. So we're going to take a lighter shade of brown that when, than what we used for his fur, but it needs to be darker than what the lighter color is of his skin. We're going to be adding little highlights to his fur here and there just to make him look like he's got some really nice backlighting. 
once you have that done, we're going to be using a darker shade of brown, which I didn't have one that was quite as dark as I wanted, wanted it to be. So I'm going to mix my brown with a little bit of black. We're going to be doing the outlining. You don't have to outline absolutely everything if you don't want to. That is a up to you sort of a circumstance. Outline as much stuff as it fits with your style. This is an older cartoon. It's not one of the new ones that has no outlining because everything looks like real people. Um, well, not real people. Proportions are a little bit wacky. But as far as the detailing goes, there's no outlines in, in new animation. Um, but it, it's not new animation. It's older animation. And it does have these really crisp outlines, which personally, I kind of like the style of. I know I've mentioned that in a few other videos that I almost miss the older animation styling. Don't get me wrong, new animation, the new movies that are coming out are just stunning. They really are. But there's just something nostalgic about those outlines and it keeps everything a little bit more, a little bit more fun for me. But that is my opinion and I think I'm in the minority. But we're going to go through and do Abu's outlines. The only places where you really need to, need to do a solid black outline are going to be his eyebrows, his eyelids, and his eyes as far as the pupils go. Anywhere else, I would go with not black. I would go with brown outlines or dark purple, really dark brown outlines, but maybe just save the straight up black for right around his eye area. It'll bring the focus to the eyes and make them just look a little more intense and a little more lively. Add a little bit of white highlighting in his eyes. You don't have to overdo that. Keep it really simple. A little bit of more outlining around his hat, a little bit of outlining in his ear. Like I said, whatever fits with your personal style, go ahead and do that. He is very built up and very 3D, so you could do minimal outlines if that is your preference. Go ahead and apply some gel sealer over the background to make that background nice and shiny. Since we did use some shimmery colors as a base and then those really iridescent sparkly silver stars, we're going to wanna make sure they're nice and shiny after that's been cured matte tap coat over a boo and this is done if you missed that jasmine and aladdin nail i highly recommend you go check out that video it is just so cool i absolutely love that one and if you are new to my channel first off welcome second off don't forget to subscribe hit the bell button so that you don't miss a notification i do upload three times a week tuesdays fridays and Saturdays, usually, unless I happen to forget, which does happen on occasion, but I do my best. I hope you guys love this video, and I will see you next time. Bye!